What's up everybody? This is Age and we are back with another vlog. First one of the year, number 12. And this is gonna be a rather long vlog, so I'm gonna be separating into two parts. So this is part one where I'm gonna be talking about Guild Wars 2 stuff, basically playing catch up for January and February. And then we're gonna do part two, which is another video. And we're talking about myself, YouTube, Twitch, a little interesting parts about YouTube as well. And you know, anyway, <laughs> let's get started. So we're putting catch up and I'm gonna be talking about the interesting things that happen. And so we're gonna definitely start off with the world versus world server rework thing. So basically ReNet finally came up with a design and I think it works. Uh, Oh, by the way, I'll be including links to everything I'm talking about in the description below, so don't worry about that. So, But basically, this World vs. World design just gets rid of all the servers. They're going to procedurally generate them, going to stick people onto them based on their uh, World vs. World rank, uh, what time they play probably, and then you're going to be able to flag a guild, one of your five guilds as a World vs. World guild. You'll be able to have alliances so that you can all play together. It's gonna, it sounds really good when you read through it. The, there is one downside and that server loyalty is gone. I I do understand that, but maybe there'll be alliance or guild loyalty or things like that. So uh, I guess it's kind of a trade-off in that respect. Uh, another thing that's going to be interesting is that coverage. Coverage is one of the things that they did highlight a little bit. That means when you actually go into World of World, there's something going on. There's some action. It's not like if you log in at 3 a.m., uh, there will be ideally something happening and not just be entirely dead and you can cap everything <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, as fun as that sounds anyway uh, there's another interesting aspect in that roaming roaming's going to change definitely because there is more people more action going on there's not going to be a I, I don't think there are going to be a lot of one solo people or duos running around anymore I think it's going to be more of a havoc centric environment with zergs and I think it'll be interesting. I'm probably gonna have to swap out my roaming to more of a scout style where I, you know, scout out groups and different things and I, you know, stall and take fights as I as I can and, and help out other groups and things like that. I think it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be definitely interesting, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't think it will ideally help World of World the way it is now because the way world's world now it like this is fixing the serve the, the the world issue it's not really fixing the gameplay issue where uh, the the gameplay is very stagnant and there's not really much changes going on that impacts world versus well in an interesting way so i'm really hoping that arena gives me something like that oh uh, by the way this is uh the world versus world redesign is a design so you're probably gonna have to wait at least five, six months for this to actually come in. If earlier, surprise me, Rina. I totally do it. Um, next thing I'll talk about is the balance patch. So uh, out of the balance patch on February, there were three things that were very interesting for Thief. So base Thief, uh, so the steel on Thief actually got upgraded for raids so that whenever you steal on a boss, you actually get a one of four raid stolen items which is really cool for example one of the items that you get from soul the item that you get from soul Sorcerer, because every time you steal it's the same item on the same boss from the same boss uh so the item you get from soul's horror is always going to be a <laughs> it's a venom type of stolen item and when you use it you cleanse all conditions on you and allies around you and for every condition that you cleanse on yourself you get a strike uh, same thing happens for allies every attack that you do you consume a strike and you do double the damage essentially so it's pretty cool that's pretty nifty and there's a uh, there's three other skills that are very helpful in uh, term based on the fight that you're in and I find it's really cool that was a really nice change uh, especially it definitely makes their double a lot more fun the other change that happened was Dead Eyes Mark. You can actually reapply the mark because they fix the malice stacking and the mark cooldown so that you can actually reapply the mark and still keep up your malice stacks. So if you are at full malice on a target and you reapply the mark, you'll still keep the full malice on the same target. That's fantastic because it actually helps in raid scenarios, world boss scenarios where you just 
always have dips in your damage because you have to reapply the mark and wait for the mouse to stack up and then you have this opening where you have like this limited time to do damage and then it happens all over again it's annoying it is a great change it also helps out in 1v1s world swirl pp all that good stuff now the last change that happened was for pve rifle for deadeye and it was actually really good because you know it actually improved the damage the benchmark is like 28k to 30k damage which is fairly decent I tried it out on Mersot, Overseer, and Deimos, and I found it was actually pretty good. So in fights where you don't have to move around a lot, like you don't have to anneal a lot, I think it's actually really good to actually bring rifle. It's actually a viable option, which is pretty cool. I like it. On to the next thing, which is proposed profession changes uh, concerning World of Sword and PvP. There were proposed changes that came out last week i believe and these changes were to one uh, reduce passive skills and well reduce the effectiveness of passive skills and two promote more skillful play now uh the changes that were proposed for thief were generally okay some things were like okay i i can accept this this is uh, is okay or it's like okay i it's iffy on it but it's tolerable but there were some things there were three things actually well, three groups of things, I guess, that uh, I did not, I have questions about. So the first thing is dagger and sword auto attack nerfs. Now, the thing is, I don't like this change is because I feel like auto attacks are kind of like literally the only other thing that that thieves use in terms of damage after you burst. So after you burst, auto attack, dip, and you, you reassess when you can go in, go in potentially burst or just go in auto attack dip out you know it, it's it's part of playing a thief and i feel like that is skillful in and of, in and of itself determining when you could go in determining cooldowns of the enemy and things like that and kind of hitting the damage kind of sucks in that respect especially on sword because i i know sd is popular right now it's meta but i, I feel like it's so slow for me uh but yeah uh, the next set of changes were, ironically, buffs to Heartseeker, Shadow Shot, and in, in, uh, Infiltrator Strike. And these are all Dagger and Mayhem May Sword weapons. And I don't know why. Maybe Infiltrator Strike, sure, but Heartseeker doesn't need a buff. Shadow Shot doesn't really need a buff. I, I don't understand those changes, but maybe it was to compensate for the auto attack nerfs. I... <sighs> I, I don't know it I question those two changes in combination with themselves so it, it's it's weird uh, the third group of changes was pretty much uh, a nerf to PvP acrobatics line uh, they nerfed the passives to a point where uh, it's it doesn't feel it doesn't seem like it'll be useful to bring I'd rather use a different line and that kind of sucks and I've been telling Arena to nerf, to just rework acrobatics for years, like not one or two traits, just the entire line. Just rework it to make it feel good to use, please, please. <sighs> but anyway, uh, we'll we'll see what happens. They're probably gonna update the list and have it out for next week. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is Living Story Episode Two. Now. Uh, for Living Story Episode 1, this is Season 4, Episode 1, I had a problem with the end of the story because uh, I was really in it, like in the throes of the story, what was happening, and then they just threw a bunch of random puzzle mechanics that just really irritated me because I was like, the feeling's gone, I can't do the story now, it's like, this, I don't feel like I'm involved in, like, in depth of the story now, but Episode 2... The, uh, the second half of the trailer had this like menacing ominous dark tone which I hopefully echoes what episode 2 will be and hopefully they learn from episode 1 in those mechanics and, and, and incorporate mechanics where it's useful but not take you away from the story from the from the involvement of you in the story when you're actually like really into it but yeah um, I think that's it oh yeah there's gonna be a new dagger so I'll probably make that not because I like it per se, but because I need it. I have a, I have a legendary problem. I really do. Anyway, uh, that's all for in terms of catching up on all the news. I will try to keep up 
more normally than I did for uh, the beginning of the year. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, I appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to see more Guild Wars 2 content from me, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Part 2 coming shortly. Stay tuned. This has been Age. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.